Welcome to the Late Show. Hey, everybody. So nice to have you here. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Um, let's see. Let's see. How was your day? What's, uh, what's in the news? Uh, what's in the news? What's going on? Oh, wow. El Chapo uh -huh. is El Scrudo. What else? Oh, Amazon Dash has uh, got these things. Amazon's got these Dash buttons online, so it's easier to order. That's a whole new world. And, uh, yeah, yeah, like Alexa and all that. Playoffs are this weekend, I guess. And, uh... Oh, oh, there's, there's this one thing. Um, if you're waking up from a coma, <laughs> bad timing, first of all. Uh, Donald Trump has been sworn in as president of the United States. I know, I know, I know. Listen, listen, we're just as confused as you are, and we've been awake this whole time. <laughs> of course, this is Trump, okay? Mm -hmm. Even though he's president, the man loves to tweet. And inauguration day is no different. He tweeted, we can't let this happen. We should march on Washington and stop this travesty. Our nation is totally divided. Wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was from Obama's 2012 election. My apologies. <laughs> he feels pretty good about this one for some reason. Um, at the actual inaugural, Trump made a bold entrance with a tie the length of an aircraft carrier. <laughs> that is... That is a lot of red tie. That what? is... Make America tie again, I think, is the motto. <laughs> That, he looks like the underbelly of a rainbow trout. But the thing is, this is what happens. Whenever the president of the United States, whatever he wears at the inaugural, tends to set the fashion tone for men for the next four years. Right. JFK famously did not wear a hat. So men just stopped wearing hats in the 1960s. So, in honor of our new president... It's very handy. It's, it's, it's very handy. You can use it for all sorts of things, like, uh... You can use it to hide an erection, for instance. <laughs> which I will not have for four years now. <laughs> let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, Hillary Clinton was there. That was so nice of her to actually be there. Don't you think? That was really big of her to be there. It could not have been easy to leave her squirrel friends back in the forest. Here she is. This is her making small talk with President Bush. I actually got more votes than he did. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, like Gore. Now, if, uh... Now, if you guys, you guys watch it? Did you guys watch it this afternoon? It was like, uh, if it seemed a little dark in the Capitol, it was either because it was overcast or because Michelle Obama was throwing so much shade. I'm so cold. <laughs> Still, she looked beautiful. She looked fantastic. Yeah. And that, yeah. that red that was dress incredible. was amazing. Yeah. Meanwhile, yeah. Melania looked stunning in her sky blue Ralph Lauren head transportation device. <laughs> I'm so sorry the rest of her couldn't make it. I was so sorry. It was. But of course, the fashion star of the day was counselor to the president, Kellyanne Conway. And I would, I would describe that look as nutcracker who came to life but only got halfway there. Now. If you look closely, this is true, her buttons are actually little angry cat heads. Very bold for her to wear pussies that close to the new president.
The podium today held four of our previous presidents, and it was inspiring to see our next four presidents all marching in together. Wow. Now, uh, right off the top, the Reverend Samuel Rodriguez got things started with a stirring invocation. God blesses those who are humble, for they will inherit the earth. Yes, the humble inherit the earth. People who brag a lot get the United States of America. <laughs> And my man, Timothy Cardinal Dolan, of course, quoted Solomon. From your glorious throne, dispatch her, that she may be with us and work with us, that we may grasp what is pleasing to you. Yes, that we may grasp what is pleasing to you. I believe that is the same prayer Trump said to Billy Bush on that bus. Let us grasp. Let us grasp. Let us grasp. What is pleasing? Mm. Now, there, there were some really nice moments today. Like, after Mike Pence was sworn in, we were treated to a beautiful rendition of America the Beautiful by the L.L. Bean catalog. <laughs> then... Then, that you really can't button your coat if your tie's this long. It looks like half of it's trying to escape out a back door. <laughs> then... Can you, can you tell I'm trying to delay this part of the monologue as long as possible? <laughs> then came the big moment, Donald Trump taking the oath of office with his hand on Lincoln's Bible, and I have been assured that it was consensual. <laughs> so that's it. Donald Trump is president. He knows the launch codes. And he hasn't tweeted them yet, so, so far, so good. <laughs> then, of course, got to stay hopeful. Got to little things, little victories. Then it was time for the speech, okay? There were some nice things about it. It was short, and it opened on a gracious note. People of the world, thank you. And the world said, hey, man, do not pin this on us. <laughs> we didn't vote. We did not. Nothing to do with it. We're clean. We're clean. Black. Trump had a message about the gridlock of Washington. That is the past. And now we are looking only to the future. So don't ask about my tax returns ever again, okay? <laughs> future. You. Sure. Then, and then, like Lincoln huffing paint thinner, <laughs> this stirring orator invoked an inspiring picture of the country he now leads. America's infrastructure has fallen into disrepair and decay. Mothers and children trapped in poverty in our inner cities. Rusted out factories scattered like tombstones across the landscape. Our young and beautiful students deprived of all knowledge. Wow. That is really... And the crime, and the gangs, and the drugs. Okay, okay, are you done? Because I think that the one thing... American carnage. We get it! We get it! The country is a turd storm! You said all of that during the campaign. You can stop now. He knows he won, right? Putin must have told him. <laughs> ah! Just give it up! <laughs> the inauguration, of course, also included the time-honored tradition of talking about how the former president sucks while Obama and Biden had to sit there as helpless as a damp Russian mattress. <laughs> I mean, oh. they... He don't put it out there like that. He don't put it out there, y'all. <laughs> I tell you, I really feel bad for Joe Biden. He got so upset, he turned into a Jeff Dunham puppet. <laughs> Trump then dedicated his administration to his biggest supporters. The forgotten men and women of our country will be forgotten no longer. Yes, the Trump administration will never forget great Americans like Buddy here and Chief and, and Big Guy and my African-American over there. I'll never... <laughs> you're always... Then the 
45th president of the United States hammered home one of his biggest campaign promises. We will get our people off of welfare and back to work, rebuilding our country with American hands and American labor. Yes, he is clearly already getting Americans back to work because here's the mall when Obama was inaugurated in 2009, and here it is for Trump today. I mean, all I can figure. All, all I can figure is that nobody could get the day off. They're all working. <laughs> and e either that's a lot of empty space, or that crowd is even wider than I thought. <laughs> I mean, there were, there were big empty spaces in the crowd, or as Trump called them, the most least people ever. <laughs> the greatest, most fantastic lack of attendance in American history. You're not going to believe how many people didn't show up. <laughs> but Trump pledged to repair the country's infrastructure. We will build new roads and highways and bridges and airports and tunnels and railways all across our wonderful nation. Yes, roads and highways and bridges and airports and tunnels and railways, so many ways to flee the country. <laughs> but. But after spending the bulk of his inaugural address talking about what a dumpster fire America is and <laughs> blaming everyone on the stage, Trump called for unity. When America is united, America is totally unstoppable. Okay, so right now, totally stoppable. <laughs> and after the speech, Reverend Franklin Graham delivered the benediction. In the Bible, reign is a sign of God's blessing. And it started to rain, Mr. President, when you came to the platform. Yeah, I've read the Bible. <laughs> Blessings, not exactly how Noah took it. <laughs> so... <laughs> yes, bless. Hey, yes. Hey, that's a different story. I'm gonna bless you. <laughs> And the Lord said, you better build a boat, because I'm going to bless the hell out of this place. <laughs> so here we are. It's really happening. Donald Trump is officially the president of the United States, which means there are now all sorts of new sentences you can actually say and mean. Like, the president of the United States was in Home Alone 2. I always thought I'd be saying that on the first day of President Pesci's administration. <laughs> the President of the United States has met with dozens of world leaders and also the Grimace. And I sure miss George W. Bush. <laughs> we have a great show for you tonight. Tim Gaffney.